So, you have some extra leaf spring steel sitting around that you had intended to make a sword with at some point, but quickly realize that you're never, ever going to have enough time to make one of those. So you ask yourself, well, is there really that big of a difference between leaf spring steel and armor plate? Oh wait, that wasn't you? That was just me. Oh, okay, that makes a lot more sense. Well, anyway, if you've ever wanted to know the difference between leaf spring steel and armor plate, we're going to try and figure it out in today's video. To test these steel plates, we have a 223, a 7mm odd 8, a 308, and a 338 Lapua. I'd say that's a pretty good assortment right there. All of the rifles being used in today's video are rocking a 24 inch barrel besides the 338 Lapua. This one has a 26 inch barrel, so we should be getting just about the maximum velocity for each cartridge. Here is the leaf spring that we have to work with. It's 3 eighths of an inch thick, and it's actually made of 5160, which is a very common steel used in sword making and knife making and things like that. It has a relatively high carbon content, especially compared to mild steel, which means that it's able to be hardened, which is ideal for knives and swords and things like that, but this one is not hardened. This is the armor plate that we have to work with, and it's also 3 eighths of an inch thick, but it's made out of AR500 steel instead of 5160, so it should be a lot harder. We also have a 3 8 inch thick mild steel plate just to kind of show the difference between all these different types of steel. So the plan is we're going to start with the 3 8 inch mild steel plate, then move up to the AR500 armor plate, and then move up to the leaf spring. We are going to be using this awesome contraption right here, Steel Sled 4.0, to hold all these steel plates. It should definitely get the job done. So how about we get this 3 8 inch mild steel plate set up in there? I think that's a good way to start the test. I am super excited to see what the difference is between all these different steels, so let's head back to the bench and start with the 223. Huh, I don't think I see an exit hole on that 223. Let's go ahead and take it out. Nope, it was pretty close, so that's a big bulge. I thought for sure with that 24 inch setup that the 223 was gonna go straight through that 3 8 inch mild steel plate, but I was definitely wrong. The rest of the cartridges though, they should not have any problems. Let's go back and try out that 7 millimeter odd 8. Looks like it went straight through, how about that? And now on to the 308. Three eighths of an inch for the 308, no problem. It went straight through. Now on to the last, but definitely not the least, the Lapua. We probably all could assume that that one was going through, but that is an absolutely massive hole. So three of the four cartridges were able to make it through this 3 8 inch mild steel plate. Now let's go to the AR500 plate and see if that's the same case. First time I've ever had an AR500 plate in this thing. I'm really interested to see what the 223 will do on this one because it's going the fastest by far. I would say nothing, but it did leave a small little crater there that I can feel with my finger. Not super impressive performance, but then again, I guess it is AR500 steel, so it really shouldn't be doing anything to it. Let's go ahead and see what the 7mm odd 8 does. Seems to be slightly deeper of a crater than the 223. Oh yeah, it's definitely deeper, but really it's not that much damage. That AR500 is definitely living up to its name. Now on to the 308. Seems to be about the same, maybe a little bit less damage than the 7mm odd 8 right there. The spalling though, those are starting to tear up that clamp face right there. I am fairly certain that the 338 Lapu is not going to go through this 3 8 inch AR500 plate, but I think at this range it may have enough kinetic energy to actually shatter the plate. Let's go ahead and see. Okay, now that might have been a little too much kinetic energy transfer. Why I say this is because this is part of my clamp and it's all the way back here. 
all the way back here. That is nuts. Just broke part of the clamp right off. That is not good. I think it'll probably still work though. Just won't have as much clamping force. Anyway, let's go ahead and check out this plate. I'm pretty excited to see what happened. Well, it left a big crater, but it really didn't do that much. Actually, I shouldn't even say a crater because it's smooth. It's more of a dent. Wonder if this is uh, covered under warranty. Well, that was uh, pretty eventful. Now let's see if that leaf spring has anything on that AR500 plate. Let's get this bad boy in there. If there's anywhere to even put it anymore. Surprisingly, it still seems like it works. I guess it's time to go back to the 223. Seems to be way less penetration than there was with the 3 8 inch mild steel plate. That's pretty impressive. That's pretty impressive for sure, but the 223 was not able to go through 3 8 of an inch of mild steel either. The 7mm odd 8 on the other hand went straight through 3 8 of an inch of mild steel, so let's see what it does to this. Well, these results are a little bit disappointing. That 7mm odd 8 went straight through the leaf spring. These weren't really the results that I was hoping for, but I guess we can go back and fire the other two cartridges. I mean, why not? Pretty much the exact same results as that 7mm odd 8. Super disappointing, but I guess that leaves one more cartridge to test. One more really really expensive cartridge to test. So I may have hit a little high, but I think you get the point. Okay, I'll be honest, these weren't really the results that I was hoping for, but there appears to be a pretty big difference between the penetration of the 223 on the mild steel plate versus the leaf spring steel, so I think you know what that means. That's right, it's time to grind! <laughs> Okay, so the absolute deepest point that I was able to find on the leaf spring steel was 142 thousandths. The absolute deepest point that I was able to find on the mild steel plate though was 364 thousandths, meaning that the 223 penetrated over two and a half times deeper into the mild steel plate than it did on the leaf spring steel. So even though the leaf spring steel didn't stop the larger rifle caliber rounds, it did a much better job stopping the 223 than the mild steel plate did. I mean, the 223 almost went through the mild steel plate. Keep in mind that this was not hardened leaf spring steel. The goal of today's video was to see how regular leaf spring steel or 5160 compared to AR500 and obviously it wasn't close. Had I been using a hardened piece of leaf spring steel I think that the results probably would have been a little bit closer but shows like Forged and Fire show just how difficult it can be to get a proper and consistent heat treatment especially if you don't have a forge at home. Anyway I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. Thanks so much for watching and remember don't let ballistics drive you bananas. Mm -hmm.